Um, since I was a teacher, I can come to you with this project from a teacher standpoint and things that you might want to do and things that you might not want to do. So that would be where I'm coming from. Um, I ran um, a very small camera club in Fordland for three years and we did a very similar project. Um, I had middle schoolers go out and take photos of their life. I wanted to see what it would be like Fordland, if any of you have ever been to Fordland, what Fordland would be like through the eyes of a middle school student. And the response I got was amazing and very moving. Um, the pride that they took in their community um, and all of those things. Uh, I made a theme for our, our photography display and it was community. So that was what those kids worked for. I understand your theme is a little bit more broad, which I think is awesome. And um, I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, so once I got them organized, um, I introduced the permission form. And as a teacher and um, as a facilitator of a project similar to this, I can tell you that this is really important. And here's why. Um, if you're taking the picture of somebody who's 18 or older, this should be no problem, right? They can say, I give you my permission to use my image for all the things that are listed here. You'll notice that the internet is listed. If you're taking a picture of someone who's five, six, seven, has mom or dad with them, you're probably going to want to be sensitive to that, right? Um, heaven forbid you get in the middle of a situation where somebody is going through a nasty divorce and is in the middle of a custody battle. Do you see where I'm going with this? Nod your heads. You don't want to get in the middle of that. So you want to make sure that whoever you're taking a picture of, that it's cool with everybody. And if they can't speak with, for themselves, it's cool with their parent or guardian. You get my drift? So that's something that you might keep in mind. That's not included on this form, but I know if I was in your situation and I had this awesome photograph of somebody and their parent was cool with it, I would document it all on the form just in case. You know, talked with mom, here's her signature, just put it on here just in case. I had my kids keep these forms with them um, so that they could keep track. What Bob was talking about, about taking tons of pictures, I encourage that. Not every picture that you take you're going to use, right? So if you take a bunch of pictures and they're not anything that you're going to be used, you're not obviously going to have to get a permission slip from every single person, right? But if it's something that you're going to use, you definitely want to have one of these. It just protects you and it protects them and it protects the project. Does that make sense? So I would advise you this is going to be your best friend and I would just keep track. Um, also, I was going to talk a little bit about the process. Um, as I said before, take tons of pictures. The more you take, the better. The more of a story you have. Um, I would have kids that came in with very little pictures and they would be disappointed at the end that they didn't have as many to choose from. So I would tell you every day, how many of you have ever seen those things where you, uh, it's like a challenge to take a picture every day with your iPhone? Kind of like that. That's how I would treat it and go about it. Um, I understand that each one of you as a school is responsible for organizing your photos. So I was going to talk a little bit about how we organized ours. Um, we had a shared drive at our school. I don't know if you have that. Yes, probably, where you can save your stuff online and you can get to any, any computer no matter what. Um, we set up a shared folder and that's where we would dump all of our photos. We would organize them by person. Okay. You guys can choose to organize it any way you want. Obviously, there are a lot of photo organization websites out there, Flickr, all that kind of stuff, that where you can group pictures together would be incredibly helpful. Plus, it might help you with your program because you can then send that link out to anybody who's interested. So I would use that to your benefit. One thing I would caution you on is that before you put somebody's picture on the internet, I would have make sure you're clear here and be sensitive. You guys are in high school, right? So I would be extra sensitive if somebody, if it's a super unflattering photo of someone, I wouldn't put it up there, <laughs> okay? Um, situations that I would avoid that I always caution my kids about, be sensitive about the fact that you're gonna have a camera at school, right? So like, 
Don't take your camera into the locker room. Do you get my drift? Things like this you want to avoid. Not only does it protect you, but it protects the project. You want to be extra sensitive to the fact that you're having a camera in school, on school property during school time. Does that make sense? My advice is if what you're taking a picture of has a social security number, I would get a form filled out. That would be my advice. If it doesn't have a social security number, you're good. I would be a little bit cautious about kids, that's all. And I would just use common sense. If it's something where you aren't sure, I would ask. I would always ask if you're not 100% sure. You just want to make sure that you're protecting the project and that it's, you know, the project is presented in the most positive light. Because the last thing you want is for something to happen and it's those kids with cameras again and then it becomes a problem for everybody. Do you see what I'm saying? Those are the kind of things that I always had to think about whenever I was teaching it and caution the students who were participating because I those are concerns. You want to prevent anything from happening before it happens. So that, if it was, so that you know who it is if you need to contact them, if there's an issue. Because we're not saying that there's going to be an issue with every photo, but if there was an issue or something came up, you want to be able to contact that person and say, hey, is it okay if we put your image at the Arts Council? You, we all have that gut instinct where we know what, when is something is going to be awesome or when something is going to be a problem. And the fact that you already know where these photos are going to be displayed, how they're going to be displayed, and that kind of thing, you already have a leg up because you'll know exactly what's going to be acceptable for the space that it's being displayed in and what's not. That would be my advice. Would be to use your best judgment in the situation that you're in. And if in doubt, ask. What we would do is we would meet every two weeks and then we would go through our folders since we had a shared drive and, and everybody's pictures were already there. You could do something very similar on Flickr, you know, where everybody would have a group or a set that would represent your entire project. We would meet and then we would pick our top five, you know, or however many kids I had in the group and how much money I had to print that week. We'd determine how many pictures we would print. You'd pick your top five, let's say, and then that's what we would go with. We would print them out monthly and um, keep track of them that way so that by the end of the school year I had a display of over 100 photos that were ready to go. So if you work in small increments like that, you don't have to try to ta tackle the entire project in a week, I would advise that to do it in small. Plus then it really is a timeline, it is a photo voice, it is a story of what you're, you're telling as time goes on, this is what you're documenting. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't get lazy about it, I would do little pieces at a time so that at the end you had a big project ready to go. That would be my advice. I would do a little bit at a time. Edit as you go kind of thing because otherwise you're just going to be totally bogged down by the end of it. Plus if you edit as you go then you have a product to show someone ready to go at any moment during the process. This is what we've been working on. Here's my link. Here's my Flickr account. That's what I would do. I would use technology to help you make it go easier. Because you're, you're all creative souls, I can tell, by looking at every single one of you. And you've got this awesome creative project, and it's just that you have these certain parameters, which I love, you know, the time, the space, the, you know, the medium, the things like that. I just cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. It's, this is why I love teaching art. <laughs> it's like a big art project. It's awesome. <laughs>